I'm Dr. Ashok Jansari and I'm a cognitive neuropsychologist, which basically means that I'm kind of like a David Attenborough of the brain, because I'm trying to study the brain to help us understand how you and I recognize, remember and read. The way that I do this is by studying people with brain damage who can't do things. So for example, I study people with amnesia, which is a memory problem, to help us understand how normal memory works. Or I'll study someone with face recognition problems to help us understand how regular face recognition works. So as an example, imagine you were at a party and someone came and started talking to you and you didn't know who they were. That could be a bit awkward and embarrassing, couldn't it? Well, there are a couple of different possibilities. One of them is that you might be suffering from a condition called prosopagnosia or face blindness. About 1 in 50 people actually suffer from this. And quite recently, Duncan Ballantyne and Brad Pitt found out that they'd been suffering from this condition all of their lives. The other possibility is that the person that you're talking to is also 1 in 50, but they're extremely good at recognising faces, and they're a super recogniser. Now, super recognisers can have met someone really briefly 10 years ago and then see them in a completely different context and recognise them. So, you might have prosopagnosia, and this person might be a super recognizer. What I do is I study people like this to help us understand how you and I can recognize faces, and then we can apply those findings to help people with face recognition difficulties, even possibly people with Alzheimer's who can't recognize faces, to improve their face recognition abilities. The other thing is that we can work with the security forces where face recognition is really important. So for example, we're working with the Metropolitan Police who are finding that some of their officers are incredibly good at recognising some of the suspects from the 2011 London riots. So generally speaking, we only understand 5% of the brain, which means that we've got a lot of work still left to do.